Uh, this is very concerning. Mark Sumner wrote a great piece about it over at DailyCoast.com titled FBI agents undermine Russia investigation, downplayed January 6th and tried to block the Mar-a-Lago search. And sure enough, that's exactly what FBI agents did. Now, you know, we all know, or at least anybody who's been paying attention knows, <laughs> that there has been a long association between police agencies and the FBI is a police agency. It's our federal police agency between police agencies or members of police agencies and right-wing politics and authoritarian, you know, perspectives and, and uh, well, even fascism. But now you've got this extraordinary report in the New York Times, uh, excuse me, in the Washington Post, uh, talking about how the FBI basically, F, literally FBI agents did not want to go down to Mar-a-Lago and investigate Donald Trump. They didn't want to do it. And they told the prosecutors, we don't want to do this. We, they got in base, you know, an argument. And the prosecutor said, you know, this was in July of last year. They, the prosecutor said, you're going to have to do it anyway. They issued the search warrant and said, you've got no choice. The quote from the Washington Post, two senior FBI officials who would be in charge of leading the search resisted the plan as too combative and proposed instead to seek Trump's permission. Right. Some of the field agents wanted to shut, shutter the criminal investigation altogether in early June. Why? Because Trump told them that he had already turned everything over. Oh, yeah. Let's just always take Donald Trump's word for it. We're the FBI, right? <laughs> this is unforgivable. I mean, this is so wrong. And think back to 2016. The New York Times, the front page of the New York Times, day after day after day was about Hillary's emails. And then the head of the FBI, Jim Comey, goes on television and says, oh, yeah, we're looking at Hillary's emails again. Meanwhile, there was a story, a legitimate story, about Donald Trump's campaign's connection to Russia. His campaign manager, Paul Manafort, had taken $14 million from Oleg Deripaska, the, the, uh, the Russian oligarch tied to Putin, in order to help overthrow the, the government of Ukraine and install Viktor Yanukovych as, the, as a Putin-friendly dictator. And he was successful. And then when they got kicked out of the country, Manafort came to the United States and ran ran Trump's campaign, number one. Number two, you had Donald Trump signing an agreement the week before the election with Putin's government to build a Trump Tower in Moscow. Number three, you had multiple meetings between people in the Trump campaign and people associated with the Trump campaign and Russian actors and Russian agents. The FBI was supposed to be investigating all these things, and apparently some did, but... You know, that's not what the FBI leaked to the, to the New York Times. What they leaked to the New York Times was about Hillary, which cost her the election. Now, why was that? Well, because the head, the former chief of counterintelligence for the FBI, the head of the FBI's New York office for counterintelligence, Charles McGonigal, was on the payroll of the same oligarch who was paying Paul Manafort in 2016. Now, he might have gone on the payroll a little later. It's, that's still a little uncertain. He hasn't had a trial yet, but it sure looks this way. And the guy who was the head of the FBI through all this, Christopher Ray, he's still there. Trump's appointee to the FBI. I think it's time to seriously, for Democrats to seriously consider uh, pushing Joe Biden to fire Chris Ray and put somebody in there who's actually going to uh, clean up that agency.